To understand the landscape and beach formation here at Porlock Bay, we need to go back in time. The last ice age came to an end about 10,000 years ago. The ice on the land around the world melted and global sea levels rose during the middle part of the Holocene Epoch. That drowned the land that is now under the Bristol Channel. As sea levels rose, the waves slowly rolled the rock sediment up to the current shoreline. This has led to there being a four kilometre wide, 8,000-ish year old ridge of shingle of varying size that stretches across this bay. If you want to research comparative examples to this landscape, Slapton Sands in Devon or Chesil Beach in Dorset spring to mind. The location of Porlock Bay within the Severn Estuary slash Bristol Channel means that the prevailing wind direction is from the west and consequently the dominant longshore drift direction is west to east. There isn't much new sediment being added to this beach and the ridge is now lower and weaker in the middle and to the west as the sediment is progressively pushed east by coastal transportation processes and as the waves travel from west to east. So with only occasional cliff falls providing new sediment, the previous steep and wide beach profiles cannot be sustained. The beach, or the sediment ridge, is pinned to the land at both ends, and contemporary or recent sea level rise is causing the centre to be rolled inland by about a metre a year. This is stretching and thinning this ridge in the middle, um, and is happening to the point where sometimes the sea is able to break through the ridge. In 1996, a series of storms, and notably Storm Lily, breached the ridge in the west. This breach has remained in place ever since so higher tides regularly, regularly now cause seawater to surge through to the landward side. This salt marsh land behind the ridge, behind the beach, was once famed for the quality of the barley that was grown here due to this wonderful soil. Part of this land was used for housing, but in modern times, before Storm Lily 1996 breach, it was used for cattle and sheep grazing. The breach was not repaired after 1996, and a good deal of the land has reverted to this salt marsh over the past 30 years or so, with natural rewilding bringing back both fish and much bird life. The sediment across this coast seems to vary quite a bit. It appears that the sediment is larger and more angular in the west and the middle of the bay, and the sediment becomes perhaps more rounder and smaller as you move towards the east. A pilot study of this might include a chi-squared test of this hypothesis, which might allow us to see if this idea merits further investigation. So how would we investigate changes in sediment size? Well there we would measure the long axis, and perhaps the B and C axis too, uh, at various points across the beach to look for these changes in sediment size. Any angularity changes might be identified using power's roundness index, which is really quite easy to use. We could use the Caillou Roundness Index as well, which requires a little bit more data manipulation. We might also look at the Zing's shape analysis to further investigate the shape of the sediment up and down each beach profile, and then look for variation across the beach from west to east. Zing's shape analysis asks us to categorise sediment into disks, spheres, blades and rods. The idea is that the waves sort the sediment. Disks should be mostly located at the top of the beach, where they've been deposited by storm waves and they are the most easily transported of the shapes and they won't roll back down again. Spheres and blades are, are in theory located in the middle and the bottom of the beach. We're going to find the spheres and the rods. In order to properly measure any sediment on this beach, we would need a robust sampling strategy. Obviously, one cannot measure every pebble on the beach, so therefore we need to measure just a few, but they should as much as possible be representative of the entire population of sediment on this beach. The beach could be stratified or split up into sections. We might also apply a systematic approach to collection, and we probably need to work out how to have a good stab at selecting pebbles at random, which is a tricky thing to achieve. I'll just finish then with some aerial shots of the breach, which is in the middle slash west of the ridge. And after that, I'll add on a few uh, moments of footage, which is very overexposed, I'm afraid, but possibly of use to some people um, of the eastern end of the beach. Thank you.